Now, welcome back to the channel, all my hustlers and grinders and go-getters, and we're back with another video. In this video, we are going to talk about the things that are hard about this business. And if you're new to the channel, hit like and subscribe. We teach you how to start and run your own business. So the boys went in to bid a job and just so everybody knows we do not land every single job by far so that is definitely one of the first struggles that you are going to face is landing your jobs but the more you put yourself out there the more jobs you bid and the more confident you are in your pricing you will land more jobs so here's the first job of the day these boxes go, this little blanket goes, this stuff goes, then over here this table goes, then this stuff right here goes, and that's it. And the JoJo's already eyeballing the table. Yes. So just like that, first job is complete. And let's talk about how this business is super easy to start. It is a really easy business to start, which means competition is gonna be everywhere. That's one of the things about this business that's difficult is there are lots of competition. And one thing you gotta do is you gotta get that phone to ring. And that's one of the hardest things to do in this business. So you gotta stay consistent advertising, building your brand and not worrying about your competition. Focus on yourself and on your business. Yeah, how can you set yourself apart from your competition? Now, Julio, we got about 80 different junk haulers out here in Sonoma County. And for the last two months, how many haulers have we been seeing each day? Uh, about four or five, maybe. About Most four or five day. haulers a day. And that's like 1-800-GOT-JUNK, Junk King, and a few other haulers that are really doing it out here. So there's a lot of competition, but a lot of guys aren't working. Yeah, and because it's so easy to start and there's lots of competition, not everybody sticks with it. So there's lots of people that start this business, but if you don't run it right, know what you're doing, educate yourself and just learn by your mistakes. So do what you can to set yourself apart from your competition and worry about you, because really your only competition is yourself. job of the day and this customer is a repeat customer and when you first start out those are hard to get because you're just starting out but once you start getting customers and they call you back and you have repeat customers you're golden <laughs> Show 
So just like that, second job is done and that was a repeat customer and I loved his house. And that was a $7 million house with three properties on it and a tennis court and a pool and a bocce ball court. And if that was my house, I'd be living in my Speedos every single day, which is crazy. And one of the things that is very, very difficult about this business, especially when you first start, is getting your phone to ring. So we do lots of videos on how starting this business is easy and how you can make $1,000 a day. And you can, that's very possible. But when you first start, it's not that easy to make $1,000 a day. The first thing you have to do is get your phone to ring and get it to ring consistently. Now let's talk about a few ways you can get your phone to ring. The first one is make sure you have a Google My Business, make sure you have a website, make sure you post ads on Craigslist, make sure you post on Facebook and groups every day or every other day, and make sure you got flyers, bandit signs, and make sure you hit the ground running hard and pass out your business cards like candy. Like me and the Julio, we pass out door hangers all the time. Yeah, we do. Yeah, one of the most important things to do is to network in your community. Put your cards everywhere. Visit all the real estate places. Um, visit your property managers. Visit other business owners. Um, go to CVS. Go to your city hall meetings. Just whenever you can, network and get your name out there. And eventually, your phone will start ringing and rock your gear like you rock your favorite football team, baseball team, or basketball team everywhere you go and promote yourself. I can't say it enough times. Promote yourself every single day and stay consistent at doing it. Now, Julio, what's your prediction of the dump fee on this one back here? I say 47. 47? Yeah. I'm gonna say $45. And JoJo? I'm gonna say 40. 40? <laughs> And, and why do we do the prediction of the dump fee? We do it. Number one, it's fun. It's kind of fun to see, uh, you know, who's going to win that day. It, gives, it kind of breaks up the work. But it also challenges us to, um, you know, kind of think ahead of time, especially when pricing jobs, how much do we think it's going to cost to get rid of this stuff? Because once you become really good at that, you will become really good at pricing your job. It was a Jojo Lena. It was $34. And how does it feel? It feels good. You don't win it. Don't win it. Now, now let's talk about another thing that's super hard, and that's pricing jobs. It's different in every single state, and most people charge between $40 to $70 per cubic yard, and a cubic yard is the size of a washing machine. Yeah, so what you really want to do is find out how many cubic yards your vehicle, whether it's a truck or a truck and trailer or a dump truck, find out how many cubic yards your vehicle is and go from there and call around and just trial and error. You're going to mess up when you first start and you will learn by those mistakes. Um, mistakes are actually so important when you're starting a business because with an open mind, you will learn from those mistakes and you won't make that mistake again. Pricing jobs takes time. You'll find what your groove is. You'll find what works for you in your area. And one thing you should do too is get a price sheet from each transfer station, each landfill, so you know exactly what it costs to dump a refrigerator, a mattress, a tire, and do your homework, do your research. And like the Joe Joe said, sometimes you might mess up, but learn from that mistake. And here's a few tips when it comes to pricing jobs. With us, if we gotta travel farther out, we charge more money. If the stuff's upstairs, we charge more money if we have to fetch the stuff and drag it to the truck and we can't pull up to the garage and load it up we charge more money and if the stuff's super heavy we charge more money so hopefully that helps you out and julio what do we do when it's a job we don't want up the price <laughs> smack them with that price <laughs> so we're heading to the next one and it's in santa rosa california so we're heading there now 
we actually had a comment on our last video of somebody that said, well, how do you charge more money? And I kind of scratched my head and I was like, I'm not sure I'm understanding what, what they're saying. Um, we charge more money by, you know, we have our like full load price and then we calculate how much more money do we want to make when we're having to walk far or travel far in gas or handle stairs. And then how we charge more money is we just tell the customer how much it's going to be and explain why it's a little bit more money. It's like, it's not difficult. Also, when you're taking out tools and when you have to go in cupboards and take out plates, food, that's bad or we have to empty them out too. And that's that free game for your ass right there. <laughs> <laughs> of the day and this person found us on a google search and that is one of the things that's hard when starting this business is having an online presence you want great seo so that when people type in junk removal near me you want to make sure you pop up so it is so important to have a google my business and a website with lots of pictures rich in keywords that you update regularly so right here in santa rosa california the customer has a budget. You know how we do it in Sonoma Strong Hauling. We will work with our budget. So one more thing that's hard about this business is it is messy and gross and some days are just horrible. You never know what you're gonna come across and find. Who knows, you might find someone's tread behind the garbage cans. And trust me, that has happened at this location actually multiple times where we found human poop near the dumpster. Yeah, so although the money in junk removal can be really good and kind of glamorous, the jobs itself are not that. So check it out, Julio's homeboy needs to get released out of county jail, free baby Johnny. I can guarantee you, whoever baby Johnny is probably needs to be exactly where he's at. Free baby Johnny. Julio. I think them damn tweakers took the copper out the AC unit again. What you think? I think so. <laughs> So I guarantee you one of your low balling junk haulers did a pickup, then came behind Safeway and dumped it illegally. And then now we're here picking it up, getting paid top dollar. So keep doing it. We ain't tripping. another example of dirty messy jobs because often you will be cleaning up around dumpsters with this type of stuff and sometimes you will even find yourself inside a dumpster cleaning one out so Julio hop in you going in first someone try to get their girls on dude is that the Rednecks dentures, dude? <laughs> what the hell? Check that out. Or someone wants some bling bling on their grill, on their teeth. So here is the poop we were talking about earlier. Oh, hell no. Oh, my damn broom. <laughs> what the hell? You guys were right. <laughs> so one of the things that's definitely difficult about this job is it gets really messy, really gross, 
even dealing with food. What she really meant to say is sometimes it's a shitty situation. So just like that, we just completed job number four and it's another nasty, filthy, dirty job. And I found something for the Julio so he can stop making babies. So check it out, Julio. We got you some Vaseline. No more babies, no more babies. But anyways, what's your guys' prediction of the Dumpy on this one back here? We have two tires, an AC unit, and a bunch of trash. I'm gonna say 111. 100. 100? JoJo? Um, you know, it's not a ton of trash. I'm gonna say 70. $70. So leave a comment down below and let us know what you guys think. Now we're heading to the dumps. Let's talk about who won. Yo, daddy, Mr. Deep Pockets. It was $78 for the dump fee. The AC unit was $30 and two tires cost $3 a piece, which makes it $114 and I guess $111. It feels damn good whooping your guys' ass. Yeah. Well, actually, me and the JoJo are one and one. And the Julio, zero. Now, JoJo, who's the hauler and baller of the week? So we have Remington. Just check out those boys in their Holland and Ballin shirt. Check them out. Represent that Holland and Ballin gear. And if you want to grab some Holland and Ballin gear, check out the shop underneath this video and you will find something just for you. We have t-shirts, sweaters, mugs, whatever you guys want to get. So just like that, we're done for the day. And me and JoJo actually knocked out another job. And here's a few more things that don't make this type of work easy and the weather conditions can be horrible. It can be hot as hell outside 120 degrees or freezing cold or raining and wet. And you gotta be out there to get the money. You can't be sitting at home thinking it's all good. These jobs are outside most of the time. And also another thing is what? Well, another thing is it is very, very physical. So you need to be in pretty good shape or I mean, you can hire somebody else to do it, but typically when you start this business, you are doing it solo and boy, does it help to be big and physically fit. So if you're out there doing jobs by yourself, pace yourself, don't hurt yourself because you can really burn yourself out. And also you gotta worry about taxes and healthcare. Yeah, because once you become, you know, self-employed and you're running your own business, paying taxes is your responsibility. And you know, that could be scary at first. So um, what we suggest is to get um, a really good CPA and to keep every single receipt for everything. Another thing is you're going to be responsible for your own health care. That's not going to be provided by anybody. So, you know, you kind of have to shop around and find, you know, the best deal possible for your health care. But um, keep in mind that those are tax write-offs. So they're going to cost you some money, but you also get to write them off as a business owner. So if you're a go-getter, a hard worker, a salesperson and you're not scared of hard work this is a great business to start so if you guys like this video what do you want them to do jojo hit the like button subscribe check out our channel membership where we have in-depth videos that tell you step by step how we do certain things check out our merch shelf and read the description down below because it will let you know things we use to schedule jobs and where we get our signs and stuff like that that may be helpful for you when you're starting this business. And we'll catch you on the next one.